Joining me now here on the M Airport, one of the minutes coming the main event of LFA 44 Friday, June 29th. A man that has made an impact inside LFA, Christian Aguilera. Christian, I appreciate your time, man. It's uh, been a wild ride for you here in LFA. Uh, all, all these uh, just highlight reel victories that you had here. But I saw your opponent, uh, Matthew, in another interview said, respects your abilities, but calls you one-dimensional. Um, does, does that bother you? Not really, man. Um, he can call me whatever he wants. We're still going to fist fight. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, he could, yeah, it doesn't matter. I respect his abilities too, but I think he's also one dimensional. So we could both see what happens. I mean, do, do you think that because of the manner and how you have, have won your fights that people just don't give you the credit for your overall MMA game? I think so. Um, the only thing I've been able to show off is my striking, but once I like, once the punches land, like not many people have been able to take the punches and keep going. So if he can take the punches, then we'll see another dimension. What's your thoughts of his striking defense? Because I think heading in this fight, this is what everyone is expecting. We're expecting you two guys to go in there and and stand in trade. Is that kind of how you feel this fight's going to go, or do you kind of feel like he's going to try to get the fight to the ground? Uh, I don't see him wrestling at all, but he could. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, I think he's going to try and like finish me on the feet, and I'm going to try and finish him on the feet. That's what we're going to end up doing. We're going to meet in the center, point to the floor, and stand there and bang it out. Like We could see what happens. Uh, the way I describe this fight is like this is just like uh... – the perfect TV fight. You know, the, these are the type of fights that, that, that fans love to see. Um, you know, but when you have the fans that are so, you know, pumped up to see that kind of fight, how do you make sure that uh, you, you still kind of stick to that game plan and, and maybe not let uh, the fans kind of dictate what you may may or may not do? Uh, it all goes into my coaching, man. Like, uh, my coaches been working. We have a game plan. We know what we're going to do. And, yeah, people can sit there. If they don't like what I'm doing, they can boo me all day. But at the end of the day, I'm in there fighting. Like, me and Matt are going to be in there fighting. So whatever's going to give me the victory is what I'm going to do. So, like, yeah, I'm not there to – like, I'm there to impress people, but I'm not solely there to impress people. I'm there to win the fight. I'm there to fight this guy. And that's what I care about. Your career, you know, you're going in your 16th uh, – your fight here, pro fight – um, you know, they always talk about game plan. How many times has there only been one game plan throughout the entire fight? Because I feel like, I mean, the, the first punch gets thrown, and and that game plan could be completely out out of the out of the books. It can and it can't. Um, we always have like a. It's more like a set of guidelines we'll try and follow within the fight. It's not like a set you have to do A, B, and C to win the fight. It's we have plan A, which is this set of guidelines. We also have plan B, plan C, plan D. And we can go through the whole alphabet. But we have options. We like I'm not just a one dimensional fighter. I do have the ability to take the fight wherever I want to take it. So if we get in trouble in one place, we'll take it to another. If we get in trouble there, we'll take it to a third. You know, we when I hear the one dimensional comment that and I mean look, this gets brought up in, in all you know, all types of, you know, whatever promotion a uh, fighter's in. But I kinda feel like for you it's because of, you know, the past couple of fights because you haven't shown off, you know, what the rest of your game is, it's kind of like this unknown. And, and like, maybe you kind of feel like people just don't, you know, because they haven't seen it, they just, you know, they're, they're kind of uneducated. Yeah. Um, only a few of my fights have been televised. Only a few of my fights have been like widely distributed. So there's a lot of aspects to my game that aren't known. And there's a lot of things we work on every single day that people don't get to see in the fights just because, like, I've been able to finish people soon on the feet. But, yeah, we'll see. There's a lot more deaths to this pond, you know? Uh, you know, and this being a main event, um, you know, I think a lot of people, they looked at you as potentially, you know, right there for a title fight. Were you kind of surprised that ultimately uh, this wasn't a title fight? Yeah, um, I thought we would do an interim. I wasn't sure when Nakashima would be back, but I was hoping to get him. Uh, but like I said, Franku has put up a good record in LFA as well. Like he's also up there in contender. So I feel like this is a good contender fight for the title. Uh, one of his teammates, Kyle Stewart, is going to be fighting for the title. So we'll see how that one goes with him and Nakashima. But um, the winner of this fight should definitely get the next crack if not get picked up to the big show. 
And, you know, they always talk about visualization and, and how you see the victory coming. I mean, ha- have you visualized? Are, are we gonna, Is it going to be another one of those? Because it seems like for you, every time we see these knockouts, it's kind of this iconic photo of you kind of looking over your opponent. Is that what we can expect here? Ideally. Like, that'd be cool. Ideally, I go out there, punch him once, and he goes to sleep. But he's trying to stop me from doing that, of course. Um, yeah, and like... To go back to the picture, like, why I always have my hands out. I never know what to do with my hands after. I'm not sure if I should keep hitting them or not hit them. So that's more of like a, I don't know what to do with my hands kind of moment. But it looks cool for the picture, so I'll take it. Yeah, I mean, uh, Kayla Harrison last night, she was talking about it when she was doing her first uh, weigh-in stare down where she was like, I don't know what to do with my hands. Was there ever that moment for you, like, at a weigh-in stare down of your opponent? You're like, okay, what am I supposed to do here? Yeah, I think the weigh-ins are kind of like an awkward thing. I'm going to stand in front of you but not bite you. Like, I always want to, yeah, as soon as I see the person, I want to hit them. Like, I've been training for how many weeks to fight this one person. So, like, I'm ready to go right when we get there. So, I'm always sitting there like, uh, do I want to be aggressive right now? Do I want to, like, just chill? But most of the time at weigh-ins, I'm just thinking about, like, pizza after, man. I'm more worried about getting cookies and food in me. What, what's, the, what's the go-to meal after you make weight? Shit, usually I have a Diet Sprite or Diet 7-Up, and uh, there's this, like, uh, special cookie with M&Ms in it from Vons, so I usually have a couple packs of those, and then I'll start working on my greens and vegetables and stuff. But that's my treat for making weight. And, uh, you know, we're talk- as we're talking here, we're one week out from, from this fight, so what's the next couple of days like for you? Uh, same old, just uh, stay sharp. We have another workout tomorrow. I had a couple workouts this morning. But, um, yeah, since the weight cut's not an issue, it's not so much about losing the weight right now. It's just, it's, uh, just staying sharp and staying on my game. So I'm going to still work, like, a couple times a day, maybe three, three times. Uh, nothing too crazy, but just to break the sweat, keep going, keep everything, like, sharp in my head. And, of course, uh, the fight uh, come up here on Friday night, June the 29th, live on Access TV, LFA 44. As always, I appreciate time. And, of course, let everyone know where they can follow you out on social media. Uh, yeah, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, D-A-T, Beast Chris, Dat Beast Chris, and then uh, Facebook, Christian, the Beast Aguilera. Boom.